Slovenia is having a moment. It's become the next place you want to be, and with good reason. I'm Carol Yelverton, and this is Hungry for Travel TV. Slovenia is one of the most sustainable countries you'll find, with hills and green forests that go on forever, and a completely gorgeous coastline to boot. She's surrounded by Italy, the Alps, and Eastern Europe, all of which have played an influence in her cuisine. Right now, we're going to do a favorite dish called goulash, and it's the Slovenian version of goulash. So let me show you how, how this is the riff on goulash, completely Slovenian style, and it's really, really delicious. This is a dish where you have a few elements that when they're done perfectly, you don't need more than that. So we're starting with stew meat, and what I've done here is I've cut it so it's more like one and a half inch cubes. It's a lot easier to eat that way. Goulash is really a soup. You know, we keep thinking that it's a stew. That's kind of because it's very, very thick, but it's actually a soup. So we're really going to approach it from that direction today. So typically when you're making a goulash, you brown meat and then you have browned onions. And typically you'd put the onions in and let them brown up. I'm going to put this over here. I actually have a little spoon for it today. Um, let it brown up with the beef. But I, I browned the onions ahead of time just to get us going, get things moving. So then we let this heat up, all come together. And then we're going to add some potatoes, goulash potatoes. You don't have to use potatoes, though. There are other options that I'm going to share with you as we move on. But here, we're just going to throw some potatoes in. And again, I'm going to move that to the side. And then we're going to stir that together. So we have onions, potatoes, meat. We've got some flyaways. A little salt, of course. Pepper, because we love salt and pepper on our food. And then the big key here is not just paprika but Hungarian paprika. When um, you get this, and I found it in a store, but you can order it online, it tastes very, very different from the stuff in the tin or the container. And when you sniff it, you will get this deep, beautiful flavor. It's kind of a little sweet, but it's not sweet at all. It's savory. And this is what makes or breaks your goulash, believe me. So we're going to put a good amount in there, say about a tablespoon. And you can add more as you go, of course. You know, taste as you go. And if you want more, add more. I actually will tend to put a lot more in because I just love the flavor so much. But this is a good starting point. Then I want to show you these beautiful bay leaves. Aren't these pretty? And again, so different when you get something fresh. Um, I buy these fresh. And then you know what I do? They come in a packet, you know, a plastic packet. I freeze them because how often are you going to use a whole packet of, you know, 20 bay leaves. So then I take it out when I'm ready. And for this dish, I'm going to put in one of these beautiful bay leaves. And then, you know what, we're pretty much done with our seasoning. So, you know, that went, you know, relatively fast. Sometimes it takes a long time to season our food. But what we're going to, what we're going to add next, some beef stock. And we don't want a lot. I mean, we don't want to overpower this. Again, you can add more. It's a soup, but it's going to be a thick soup, you know, so we don't want to have it too thin with too much beef stock in it. And then the other thing I put in, some pureed tomatoes, because uh, that really thickens it up, and it just gives it a really lovely quality and a ton of flavor. So we just stir that all together. And then we just let this cook for about an hour and a half. You cook it on a low heat uh, for a long time, and that's really how uh, it just, you know, everything comes together, and, all, and that paprika goes into everything, and it just tastes really, really delicious. So while that is cooking, about the last 45 minutes of cooking, I have my own little riff on, on this that I like to do. Um, Slovenia has a lot of beautiful foods uh, that are indigenous, and mushrooms are one of them. And the mushrooms that you get there are just so beautiful, so delicious. So what I'm going to do is add some mushrooms to the top. Um, so we have roasted mushrooms here and our garnishes. And I'm just going to bring all this over and show you how we're going to do this. So these are oyster mushrooms. I know they look very different from the button mushrooms that you see in the supermarket. And you can see kind of how they are. And I have wiped them down. And then you just kind of pull them apart. These don't need to be wiped as much as, say, button mushrooms or certainly porcini mushrooms or portobello mushrooms. Um, but then you see here they are. Now, these are pretty big ones. You don't always get them this big. So I'm just going to just gently break them apart. Never cut. Never, ever, ever cut. Please do me a favor. Don't cut the mushrooms because you just want things to move on their own here with this. Something like button mushrooms, you have to cut. You know, that's fine. But these you can just shred and make them as big or as little as you want. So we have our mushrooms, a nice batch of them. And then I'm going to add some olive oil. And these soak up that olive oil beautifully, and it enhances the flavor, and it just, you know, really adds a, a nice luscious element. Again, we've got some salt we're going to put on. 
And then fresh thyme. Thyme and mushrooms, and I make a lot of mushrooms. I roast mushrooms a lot. I love them on, on all kinds of meats, with soups. So that's kind of one of my favorite things to do. Um, sometimes I mix lots of different uh, types of mushrooms together too, and that makes an amazing flavor. But for here, for this dish, for our goulash, it is definitely about these oyster mushrooms, which are you find in Slovenia, and they're, they're beautiful and delectable. So thyme goes beautifully on mushrooms, especially when you roast them. It's just, it complements the flavors. Again, you find thyme in Slovenia, so it's, it's all natural to that country. Uh, they have beautiful foods there, beautiful fresh foods, and uh, they have seafood along the coast, which is fantastic as well. So I just mix all these together. And then I pour them onto this cookie sheet, and I put aluminum foil on top just because you know, I'm seeing all the, the mess I'm making here. I'm kind of moving it away. Okay, so then we get this all tossed all around. Now, I don't want too much on the edges. I don't want too many outliers because they'll just get really dried up when we're, when we're roasting them. 425 degree oven for 25 minutes or so. Check halfway and turn them. And then, you know, just look. You'll see when they kind of reach this point. Let me show you. These are already done. So you can see the difference and how they, they've come out. They've really, they've shrunk, they've gotten brown. The flavor is much more intense and beautiful to them. And, you know, they just, they are magnificent. They're going to go on top of our goulas. So this is cooking and it's doing great. Coming together. This is again going to take an hour and a half. So we're going to let that do its thing and cook away. Um, and of course, as you'd expect, I have one already made. So... <laughs> I'll show you what the finished product looks like. And again, I love the steam. I love the cooking, the aroma. I'm smelling that paprika. It is so good. And the beef, the flavor with the, the onions and potatoes, it's fantastic. So let's just spoon some out. This is my mother's ladle, by the way. Doesn't it look like something out of the 1970s? I think she'd be very happy. It's being put to use today. So here we go. And of course, we're going to take the bay leaf out. There's a bay leaf in here, and we're not going to serve that. We always take that out and put it to the side. I'll just put it to the side of the pot for now. Okay, so we have a nice bowl of beautiful goulash, and then we are going to add mushrooms on top. Okay, and that just makes a beautiful presentation, and you don't lose the flavor of the mushrooms in the goulash. You really get that flavor here. That's a little bit. I'm going to take it off. There we go. So we have that all around the top. And then what I like to do is to put just a little tiny bit of truffle oil. Yes, truffle oil, you're welcome, on top. It's kind of got this oh, sensuous, garlicky, just incredible aroma. Now the thing about truffle oil is you don't put it in cooking. You drizzle it on the top of a prepared dish and it just adds the nicest element and you just use a little tiny, tiny bit. So we're not gonna use much here at all. Just gonna add a little couple of drops, couple of drops, there you go, perfect. That's all she wrote. And then I like to put some parsley on top just for a little color. See, doesn't that make it pretty? And then one of the things I love to do, now not, you don't always find this in Slovenia, uh, putting the sour cream on the side, but you do in some areas. And again, it's so diverse there. There's so many different recipes and ways of doing this dish. Um, so I'm just adding a little sour cream on the side. So I've got that there. It's just gonna add a little acidic element and I really like that in cooking when I cook. I just like to add that on. So you can see here is our finished product. Here it is. All right, it is beautiful with the sweet, deep paprika, the beef, the potatoes so beautifully cradled in that sauce. Then you get a bite of these beautiful, chewy oyster mushrooms drizzled with garlicky truffle oil. And then I just love, again, that, that little shot of sour cream on the side. It is just sensational. Slovenia, by the way, is the first country to be declared a green destination. And once you're there, you're going to find so much to do. Here's a time-lapse video that will help show you all around.
really diverse. There are lots of small areas that make up the country and they all contribute to its big, beautiful scope. Slovenia's food scene is really starting to emerge too. Here's a closer look at the culinary happenings you'll find there. Boy, everything looks delicious there, doesn't it? Well, I hope you've enjoyed this recipe, and I wanted to share with you just as we finish up that there are a couple of ways to go about this. I have the potatoes in this goulash, and I'm putting some bread in. It really adds a nice textural element. It's good for dipping and having with this. But if you don't want to do the bread and want to take the potatoes away, you can serve this on top of noodles, which is really traditional, or polenta, creamy polenta, which is especially popular up in the area near Italy. Well, I'm Carol Yelverton. I'm so happy you've been with us for this edition of Hungry for Travel. And until I see you again, stay hungry.